Okay, so here in SharePoint Designer, we are going to add an external content type by clicking on the external content types link. And once it retrieves the empty, empty list of external content types, then we will go ahead and add our new external content type. So you can see there's no content types in our list here, so we're going to add external content type. And that brings up the new external content type window. And we're going to add the name HR Training Management. So HR Training Management being the name of our external content type. If we click on Display Name, it'll automatically copy that uh, name over to Display Name. And if we are going to bind this list of whatever we're going to connect to here uh, to an Outlook item, we could choose the Office Item Type and choose between Appointment, Contact, Task, or Post but we are not going to connect this to Outlook, so we're just going to leave it set as generic list, um, and we are going to enable offline synchronization, so we'll allow this data to be synchronized to a workspace. And then external system, we're going to click here to discover external data sources, and that's basically going to bring us to a window where if we had already created uh, a connection to an external data source, we could select that connection here, or since, as you see here, there's nothing in my list, we can go and add a new connection. And here you see we have our three choices. We have the .NET type, SQL Server, and WCF Service. So since we're going to be connecting to a SQL Server, we're going to go ahead and choose the SQL Server option here and click OK. And before we type in the database name, um, let's take a peek at the um, authentication options. We have connect with user's identity, which we're going to use for this demo because we don't want to get into defining security. But in the real world, we'd use uh, a connect with impersonated Windows identity or connect with impersonated custom identity. In most cases, it's going to be an impersonated Windows identity, which we would have configured previously in the secure store. So we'd configure a, an identity in the secure store, and then we'd specify that applications, or rather that uh, identities, ID here in uh, the server connection window. But again, we're going to go ahead and use connect with the user's identity because this is just a demo and we'll do um, user accounts later. So the server name happens to be SharePoint and the instance name is also SharePoint. The database name in this case is HR Training Management. And we don't need to give it a name, it's our only connection, so we don't need to give it any additional details. We'll just go ahead and click OK there. And unless something goes horribly wrong, we should see a list of tables uh, and other resources beneath our HR training management connection. So for this demo, we're going to connect to the training supplier table in the HR training management database. So we are going to right click on training supplier and if we wanted to make this a read-only connection, we could go and choose uh, just read item or read list uh, and create only those operations. But we want to be able to read and write to this, to this data source, so I'm going to choose to create all operations. And that brings up our wizard, where we can then uh, review that we're creating the create read item update, delete, and read list operations, and click Next. Now here, it wants to know which field is the identifier or the primary key for this table. Now because we already have a primary key defined, it automatically mapped that to the identifier. So that is the primary key for this, call, for this table, so it's going to be the unique identifier for the records in this external list. Then we need to tell it which columns we want to be able to see. So we want the supplier ID to show up in the picker. We want the supplier to show up in the picker. The address, primary contract, 
contact telephone, and contact email. The next step is to determine if we need any filters for these records. So if we don't want all the records in the table to be returned, we could set a filter uh, and maybe say show us only uh, records where the ID is less than 100. So we might, the, the, the recommendation here is to add a filter of type limit for this operation. Without a filter, this operation may result in large result sets. Now, I happen to know that this table only has two records in it, so we don't need a filter, but I'll show you how to add one anyway. If we click Add Filter here, we can choose the type of filter that we want. We're going to choose the limit type filter, and we're going to limit on the supplier ID, and we are going to specify a default value of 100. So this will limit our suppliers to uh, suppliers with IDs less than 100. All right, so that's how we'd add that limit filter. We don't need that for this demo, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it and click the Finish button. So now we have all of our operations uh, on this external content type, our Create, Read Item, Update, Delete, and Read List for the Training Supplier Table. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and save it. You can tell it needs to be saved because it has the asterisk next to the name. Now that it's been saved, the asterisk is gone, so it's actually been saved out to the database. Uh, but now, if we want to be able to view the data in this external content type, we go back to the external content type list. Now the external list option is highlighted. So we can go ahead and click on external list and give it a name. I'm going to call it training suppliers with no space. And click OK. And at this point, the training suppliers external list is connected to the HR training management external content type and displaying the records from the, uh, the training suppliers table. So if we navigate over to our SharePoint site here, do a quick refresh, we can now see training suppliers is on the quick launch menu. However, if I click on training suppliers, we get a big fat access denied. Access denied by business data connectivity. That is because uh, I have permissions to be able to add an external content type, but in order to allow users to view the data in that external content type, I need to go and give users permissions to it. So we're going to go into central administration, and we are going to, under application management, choose manage service applications. Now the service application that we're using in this case is the uh, <coughs> Uh, business data connectivity service. So we're going to choose to manage the business data connectivity service application where we will find our HR training management external content type. So we're going to put a check mark next to HR training management and we're going to choose set object permissions. So for the sake of this demo, to make it simple and give everybody access, we are going to add all authenticated users. And so we're going to browse to all users, choose all authenticated users, and then add and click OK, and then add again, and then we can set the permissions. Now, at least one user has to have the set permissions permission so that they can give other users permissions to this uh, external content type. Uh, but we're going to give all users all of those permissions. Now obviously in the real world we probably wouldn't want to give all authenticated users permissions to set permissions. But uh, for the sake of this demo we're going to keep it simple because the first user has to have set permissions. Now we click OK. And that external content type is now accessible by all authenticated users. So if we go back to our training suppliers external list here and just click on the link one more time, 
Now we have access to our training supplier list, and we can see that there are two records held there. And if we click on the primary key or the identifier, it will take us to the detail form for this particular supplier, supplier ID number three. And then we can go and edit this form and change the phone number of this supplier from 555-5555 to one, two, three, four. And now we do hit the save button. We're going to save that new phone number back to the database and it appears here in our external list. And just so you don't think that I have anything up my sleeves, we'll go check in SQL Server and verify that that new phone number was actually added to the database called HR Training Management on SQL Server. So if we look in our list of databases, we can expand HR Training Management and beneath the Tables folder we will find our Training Supplier Table. If we right click and do Select Top 1000 Rows we can see that our supplier ID number three now has the phone number 555-1234.